Hello there, welcome to CTT Loves Movies and the series Alternative Oscars where I look at the performances and best pictures and I choose the winners. It's 1980. The Academy made history that year when for the first time the show was postponed because U.S. President Ronald Reagan was shot that very day. He pulled through and the Academy ran the show the very next day. Let's begin. I did find Mary Steenberg and very deserving. However, among the nominees, I found Diana Scorwood even more so. She played her role very vulnerable, very human, uh, showed all her insecurities. She was my choice among the nominees. But I have another choice, the non-nominated Barbara Hershey for The Stuntman. This is an actress that has plenty of range. She can communicate her emotions across her face, particularly in this scene where she plays an actress who has just been humiliated in real life so that her director can capture that emotion on screen. It is raw and it feels so real. I was thinking about the pigeon. You know, the one that used to hang around the garage? And how he used to get on top of your car and he'd take off and you pulled out of the driveway. Oh, yeah. yeah right. I thought you didn't like to fool around. I don't, right? I'm not. You don't like I to play games, you... do you? I don't. So? What do you want? I'll tell you what I want. I want you to leave I don't know out there on the table with the magazines, okay? Yeah, and if I don't have an answer, you want me to make one up? Yeah, that would be nice. Make one up. It's impossible. It'll never happen, so why go crazy thinking about it? It's not normal. Hard luck stories, they all end me. So make my bed. Oh, it is I, the creep! Ventini! Do you know, Dad, not one of us has ever beaten you in a single game. Not checkers, not dominoes, not softball, nothing. Now, not nominated but noteworthy were Levon Helm for The Coal Miner's Daughter and Leslie Nielsen in an airplane. Maybe he doesn't deserve an Academy Award nomination, but I have rarely seen deadpan humor played so well. Okay, but the winner was Timothy Hutton in Ordinary People, and he was a real revelation. But this was really a leading role, not a supporting role. This is where I feel that the Academy sometimes cheats. If Joe Pesci in Raging Bull had been given the same screen time as Hutton, and had been given a chance to display more layers to his character, he probably would have won. Pesci plays Joey LaMotta, the brother of Jake LaMotta, and a victim to his brother's bullying. And um, he nevertheless protects his brother and is very unspoken, yet Joey feels that if he doesn't protect his bullying brother, nobody else will. He is caring yet obnoxious, angry but loyal. Pesci gives his character real layers. He is my choice. Don't you have that backwards? Oh, and how do I hurt you? By embarrassing you in front of a friend? Poor Beth, she has no idea what her son is up to. He lies. It's real important, Clance. All right. That's one. That's one. Can't. Here. Listen. Christ, I can't. I can't even turn you over to the cops, don't you understand? I've been in jail. You understand, jail? 
the people that killed your parents are my friends. I can't get I involved. I want to give an honorable mention uh, to Shelley Duvall and The Shining. It's very well documented that director Stanley Kubrick pushed her so hard that uh, she's psychologically damaged, some say to this very day. Now, this is very abusive. I wish she had not gone through that. Nevertheless, she did deliver what he wanted. She's not my choice, however. Yes, my choice is the Academy's choice, Sissy Spacek. She's very much in control of what she is doing. She goes into a magical character transformation. She did her own singing, sounding very much like Loretta Lynn. And how many actresses can play a 13-year-old and a 36-year-old convincingly? It's a marvel to watch her. I am happy every hour of the day. My life is full. Could I know that I am loved? Well, kick your butt. Now, come on, guard me. You gotta win by two. I'm not gonna guard you, Dad. Hey, 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 Mama's I'm boy. Wine. Mama's boy. I bet you're gonna cry. Come on, Mama's boy. Let's see you cry. Come on. Palm trees. Yet more palm trees. Who had the audacity to put palm trees there? They will be in every shot. And what are palm trees doing waving around on a battlefield in Europe during the First World War? Answer them in that. Let's just say that I'm not the father that you always wanted, all right? Has it occurred to you that you are not the son that I always wanted? I really wish that Donald Sutherland had been nominated for Ordinary People. He's very noteworthy. And in a weaker year, John Savage may have picked up a nomination for Inside Moves, the same as Tatsuya Nakadai for Cage Musha. But the Academy's choice and my choice could not have been anybody else but Robert De Niro in Raging Bull. I believe it was De Niro that started this craze of actors physically changing for their roles, losing and then gaining weight. He plays a despicable, disgusting character who we begin to hate, but we can't keep our eyes off of him. By the end, we do feel a measure of pity for him after he pushes everybody away because of some unexplained, insecure inner rage that he often loses control of. He ultimately feels lonely, but still doesn't hold himself accountable for his actions. De Niro has never been more magnetic.
I believe the film Cage Busha was very noteworthy, and in another year, perhaps Brubaker and Fame may have been nominated. And I don't begrudge Ordinary People its Oscar. I think Ordinary People, Ordinary People is actually better than a lot of people give it credit for. But most people feel that Raging Bull was robbed. So much so that Robert Redford, who directed Ordinary People, seemed a little embarrassed to be standing there holding the Oscar instead of it being Martin Scorsese for Raging Bull. Martin Scorsese really showed us what cinema can do on a technical level, especially in the use of editing and sound. We hear punches crunching bone, blood squirting out, camera flashes exploding, animal noises in the ring. The actors demonstrate the dilemmas of insecurity, of confused masculinity, guilt, Freudian outlooks on the way men look at women, the fast-paced editing, the floating camera. It's a stupendous achievement, but for all of that, the movie falls apart in the last half hour as the film becomes tedious and repetitious, and we are just drained. Uh, if the entire movie had been like the last half hour, we would be singing a different tune. Now, for some reason, the Academy chose to ignore Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, which I feel is actually more entertaining than Raging Bull. I know I'm going to catch a lot of hell for saying that. Um, it took the original Star Wars film saga and made it better than the original. Some say the best of the franchise. The Empire Strikes Back has a lot going for it. But is it better than Raging Bull? Let's put it this way. I feel that it's more entertaining, so what can we do? I feel that we should take the Oscar nomination away from Tess, or the coal miner's daughter, and give it to Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Give it the nomination, however, let Raging Bull pick up the Oscar for Best Picture. Okay? Because, despite everything I just say, said, I cannot deny the innovations, the performances, and the technical savvy of Raging Bull. It's just that good. Okay, everybody, uh, that's it. In the meantime, send me your comments, send me your likes, or better yet, subscribe. This is CTT Loves Movies.